Hi everyone, I'm John from Radford Mathematics, and in this video on circle theorems, we're going to be learning about the rule involving a circle and two angles at its circumference. And it states, given a circle with two angles at its circumference, if those two angles are subtended by the same arc, then those two angles are equal. And that's the theorem. Now what I'll do in this video is I'll start by illustrating the rule I just gave you, just to make sure that it's fully understood. And once that's done, I'll work through two examples for which we'll need that rule to solve them. So let's get started. On the screen here, you can see that I've got two circles, and these correspond to the two examples we'll be working through shortly. First of all, let me illustrate this theorem. For that, I'll start by drawing a circle, so something like this. There we go. Now I add two points to the circumference of this circle, so I'll say one there and one right here which you can see creates an arc between those two points. And now I'll create an angle at this circle's circumference. And I do so by placing a point, say, right here, and by joining that point to the other two points I already had. So that would look something like this. There we go. I now have an angle at this circle's circumference. And now I create a second angle at the circumference. And I'll do so at this point here, which I joined to the previous two points again. So that would look something like this. Okay, I now have my second angle at the circumference. Okay, now what this theorem is actually telling us is that if these two angles at the circle's circumference are subtended or formed by the same arc, then the two angles are equal. And now looking at these two angles at the circumference, we can see that they're both formed by the arc at the bottom of the circle here. In other words, both of these angles are subtended by the same arc. And that's this arc down here at the bottom. There we go. And so since these two angles at the circumference are subtended by the same arc, this theorem allows us to state that those two angles are equal. And so if I go ahead and give them names, say angle A and angle B, then we can go ahead and state that A equals to B. And there we go. And now still looking at this same circle, what about this angle and this angle? And in fact, I'll name them. I'll say that this is angle C and this is angle D. Well, looking at this, we notice that both angle C as well as angle D are angles at the circumference, and they are both subtended or formed by the arc we have up here. Consequently, this theorem allows us to state that angles C and D must also be equal. And so I can go ahead and write C equals to D. And there we go. Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and work through these two examples. And I'll start with this one. And in fact, I'll label it example one. Now, looking at this, we need to find this angle, which I've called A, as well as this angle, which I've called B. And one thing we notice quite quickly is that both of these angles, A and B, are angles at the circumference of the circle. And so a good reflex to develop is to ask yourself which arc along the circle is subtending each of those angles. Well, let's see. Angle A here is being subtended by this arc at the bottom here. And in fact, I'll highlight that. Angle A here is being subtended by this arc at the bottom here. And looking at this circle, we can see that there's another angle that's being subtended by the same arc, and that's this 52 degree angle we have up here which is also an angle at the circumference. And so since the angle A and this 52 degree angle are both angles at the circumference, and they are both subtended or formed by the same arc, we can use our theorem to state that those two angles must be equal. And so we can state that A is equal to 52 degrees, since it must be equal to this angle right here. There we go. That's angle A taken care of. Now we look at angle B, which again is an angle at the circumference, and we ask ourselves which arc along the circle is subtending this angle. Well, looking at this angle B, we quickly see that the arc that's forming it is this one up here. And in fact, I could highlight that. This angle here is subtended by this arc up here. And looking at the information we have here, we also notice that this other angle of 70 degrees, that's this angle right here, is also subtended by the same arc. Consequently, we can use the same theorem again 
to state that angle B must equal to 70 degrees. And so we can write that as well, B equals to 70 degrees. And we're done. Okay, we look at example two. And again, I'll label that example two. Now in this circle, there's a bit more going on than in the previous one. And in fact, we're gonna need more than just one theorem to solve this one. Let's see, we need to find the angle A and the angle B. And looking at these two angles, we can see quite quickly that they're both being subtended by the arc we have down here. Indeed, we can see that this angle A and this angle B are both subtended or formed by this arc here. And since this angle A and this angle B are both angles at the circumference of this circle, and that they're subtended by the same arc, we already know that those two angles must be equal. But what are they equal to? Well, to answer that, we need to somehow connect this 116 degree angle to either one of these two angles. And here's how. We're going to use a theorem involving cyclic quadrilaterals. And this circle has two of them. Indeed, we have a cyclic quadrilateral that I'm hovering over right now. And we have a second one that I'm hovering over right now. And we could use either one, but I'll focus on the quadrilateral, which has angle A inside of it. And in fact, I'll make a quick sketch in the upper right hand corner here. So I've got my circle and I'm focusing on the quadrilateral, which looks something like this. There we go. I've got my angle A here, which I'm trying to find and the 116 degree angle down here. Now, if you don't know, a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral. So it's a polygon with four sides whose vertices are all on the circumference of a circle. And a very important theorem that's worth knowing here is that opposite interior angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. And so looking at what we have here, we can quickly state that A plus 116 has to equal to 180. And now I can solve this for A by subtracting 116 from both sides. And so I'll write that here. I subtract 116 here, and I subtract 116 here. And that leaves us with A on the left-hand side of the equation, and that's equal to 180 minus 116, which is 64. And that's 64 degrees. And we're done. We've just found angle A. And now remember, since angle A and B were both angles at the circumference and they're both subtended by the same arc, we can use the theorem we saw earlier on to state that B is equal to 64 degrees. And there we go. We now know this circle theorem. Remember, angles at the circumference of a circle are equal if they are subtended by the same arc. 